name is Berge Akian. I'm the CEO and founder of a company called Classlink. What we're excited to do is talk with you a little bit about something new that we're going to be releasing. What we'd like to talk about today is really this idea of account provisioning. So it's not the sexiest of topics, but it's an important one. And maybe for some of you here in the room, this is uh, something that very much hits home. And by the way, if you're not sure what account provisioning is, let me give you a, a quick primer. Account provisioning is this idea of having a methodology to automatically create the login accounts in your directory. So whether you're using Microsoft Active Directory, or if you're using Azure, or if you're using Google, or a combination of these things, your institution needs to create login accounts in these different systems. And so we have something to share with you today in that area. Most of the time, the way this software works is real straightforward. You have some source database, which is your student information pretty typically, or an HR system. And you're going to bring that information into some middleware product. And that product is going to move forward and create the login accounts in some destination directory, usually Active Directory, like we said, Azure or uh, Google as well. It gets a little further, you want a little bit of customization in there. This idea of scheduling is important because you need this process to run regularly, usually every day. And so that's the basics of it. And that's what we built. But we didn't stop there. We made ours uh, super fast to run. We made it quite secure. The system is installed on your network and it interacts directly with your sys, bringing the data in, whether the sys is in a cloud or not, and it interacts with your local network. So it's quite secure in that way. And we went a little further. We added a little magic to this. And the idea is simply this. Not only does it take the information, as you saw earlier, from the left-hand side all the way to the right into the systems, it's going to bring it back. And the reason for that is we want you to have the power of reconciling your entire Active Directory, your Google and, and Azure, bring it back and reconcile it to your source data sets. Now, why would you want to do that? For the reason that spring cleaning sometimes never happens in our directories. And there's usually a whole load of accounts in there. Maybe yours, yours is the exception. But the school systems that we meet with we ask, what's your enrollment? And they tell us, oh, we have 3,000, we have 5,000, we have 10,000. But then when you look at Active Directory, there's 15,000 users or 17,000 users and a user count that just doesn't begin to make sense with the enrollment. And when we ask why, we say, well, we don't really go in there and clean it out as much as we should or could. The tools just aren't there for that. This will do that. It'll bring it back. It goes also one step further. Not only is it going to create those accounts in the three directories we spoke about, Active Directory, uh, 365, as well as Google, it will go one step further. Using our experience and software that we have with Roster Server, it will also go further and provision the accounts into Microsoft Teams and into Google Classroom. Now that's kind of a big deal as well. The reconciliation part is unique and different. This idea of creating the accounts in Teams and in Classroom is also quite unique. And even if you talk to the Microsoft and the Google folks, they'll tell you there's no real great way to do that because usually the enrollment information is a little futsy when they're getting it directly out of the SIS. And secondarily, if they tried to pull it from AD directly, that's usually a bit of a messy environment as well. So the idea that we can use the same tool to couple it with our roster server to bring it all the way into Teams and Classroom. That's pretty exciting for most people as well. So that's a little bit of the background. So I'm going to invite uh, Stan to come on up and he's going to give you a little demonstration about it. And then I'm going to come back and maybe talk a little bit about uh, pricing and about availability. So if you don't know me, my name is Stan. I'm the CTO of Classlink. So we built this product called OneSync and we had a focus around uh, usability, making it easy. And as you can see here, this dashboard represents the number of user accounts that I have in the system, the different areas that I'm importing user accounts from, and the destination. So the different locations that I will be provisioning my accounts into. So you can attach these different destinations, you can attach these different sources. So as you can see here, so why are we doing this at IMS? Well, one of the sources that we can import here is the IMS Global One Roster Server. So I could go in here and I can pick 
one roster. So if you have an existing one roster server and you want to provision student accounts into one of these different directories, you can already leverage your one roster server. And then what we can also do is specify multiple destinations. So you have multiple sources, multiple destinations, and we have a lot of rules around where these accounts are going to be pulled in from. We're going to clean up the data, and then we're going to let you transform that data into these different destinations. And I'm going to show you how that works. So let's go into one of my sources. And this is just a small data set. And I'm just going to click on Run. And what it's going to do is it's going to connect to that one roster server. So this, this uses, uh, uses the ClassLink one roster server. And it's pulling in users from that server now. So you'll schedule this on a, a nightly basis or some interval that you specify. And it'll pull in all of your users and make them available inside of OneSync. So this becomes your data source. So the accounts that are in here would then automatically be sent to all the different destinations that you have available. And as you can see, it's pulling those users in now. It's a pretty small data set, so we're not going to have to wait a long time. I think it only has like 5,000 or so users. And the way it works is you go in, and as you can see, it pulled in all those users already from that one roster server. And what you do here is you map fields from one roster into fields inside of OneSync. So first name to first name, last name to last name. So that data you can reuse in these other uh, destinations. So I'm going to go into Active Directory here. This is one of my destinations. And the way it works is you connect to your Active Directory and you specify the users that you want to provision into that directory. In my example, I did a very simple one. All users whose last name start with Y. And I'm going to make this Z. And now you can see I have 20 users. I'm going to save it. And now this particular destination will provision any user that starts with the letter, letter Z into Active Directory. So it's going through the collection. It's looking at all the different users that meet that criteria. And I have it disabled. I'm just going to enable that destination. And there you go. So right now what this is doing is taking those users that were uh, in my OneSync server that met the criteria that I specified, it just created those users inside of Active Directory. That easy. So if I wanted to provision all those users, I could have done that. If I wanted to provision a subset, so maybe you have a data feed from your teachers from one system, your HR system. You have a feed from your students from uh, another CSV, your sys, or even one roster. You specify those feeds, and then you create rules about where those accounts will be created. Because we've seen, and I'm sure many of you even have this instance, where you may only provision some users into Active Directory, some users into Google, and other locations. So this will let you selectively pick what users will be put into those different destinations. And the, the nice thing about this is you can create really complex rules with the data that you see here. So I can say, I want my container name to be the first name and last name. So I go in here and I just click. And as you can see, these are the different fields that are available to me. And I also have transforms available. So if your data comes in all uppercase, I don't want my usernames to look uppercase inside of Active Directory. I want them to look proper case. So we actually have functions in here that will clean up your data going into those destinations so it looks nice and pretty. And uh, if you noticed here, one of the things that we did, like our attention to the detail for usability, you'll notice some of the fields are green. And all that is saying is these are fields that you have populated data with. You'll see the universe of fields that are available. But we'll show you the fields that when you imported your data will now have a green highlight. So that's just one example of the usability. Then you have custom mapping. So you may have like special rules that you want to apply for your users when they get provisioned into a, de a destination. Group mapping. So if you want those same rules, you can apply to map users to different groups. And this area we really like, events and triggers. What is an event and trigger? So you can say something like, when this user is disabled, I want to move them to this OU. So it gives you the ability to perform certain actions on users in these different destinations when a field or value changes inside of one sync, which is really important because we notice that a lot of times with our, our customers and even our active directory, when a user becomes disabled, we like to move them into a, a different destination or a different OU and let them sit there in a deactivated state because we do not want to deact uh, delete your users. That's something we don't do. We disable them. We put them in a nice little location so you can figure out what you want to do with them. And then, uh, most importantly, 
all activity is logged. So anything that happens inside of our system, you will see every user and what occurred with that user. So we have extensive logging on all the actions that occur within the OneSync system. Correlation also. So before you import your users, if you already have a thousand teacher accounts, some systems, they will ask you to purge all of those accounts to start over. Our system doesn't work that way. We will link those through our correlation process. So you create rules to match them. If the username matches from one sync into that destination, you match them, increase that link, so it won't recreate them. So it's a nice way to, to kick off the, the initial setup with our product and link the accounts that you already have. And that is one sync. There's not much to show because we made it easy to use and that's the whole goal of our product uh, is to make it where anyone can manage it. So the, the idea here with, with this tool, we know it's a bit of a technical tool. We know there's only a few people in the school system that are going to want to focus in this area. But we also know that it's critically important for so many of the interoperability conversations that we're having. Now, when we talk about how we price things, we have a flat fee for our product and our whole solution. And so for those of you that are existing customers, everything that Stan just showed you is included for no additional cost. Because we feel that this is an important component to making the entire system work. And for those of you that uh, you have that daily grind, you know it's true. If you can't log into the network, there's not a whole lot of point of a single sign-on experience. If you're not able to provision those accounts in the tens or possibly hundreds of different vendors that you work with, what's the point of a network account? So all of this we feel is part of a collection. And I think in terms of how the product works and in terms of our pricing really makes that message clear. For those folks that are existing customers, there is a one-time setup fee for this, but that's the only cost. There's no additional license fee. We've also been asked, well, Berge, when is it that we can turn this thing on? Is it ready? So it does exist. It's in production today. And for those folks that want to try it, we welcome you to do it. And you can begin making appointments with us on June 1st. So thanks so much. Thank you.